Dear friends, welcome to the world of adventure. Adventure about identifying, analyzing, meeting the needs unmet. The needs unmet of those who deserve us but often cannot desire us. They deserve us because all of us have drawn a great deal from the society. Our sustenance, our support, our food, our air, the water that we drink comes because some people conserve the forest, some people conserve the mountains, some people conserve the rivers and streams and can let them flow for millennia, tens of thousands of years. Today is the time of payback for all the breath that we have taken. And how do we do that? by first identifying the problems that a lot of people in our society live with, often without any redress, without any relief. There are tribal people, there are small entrepreneurs, there are roadside hawkers, there are struggling small vendors, there are manufacturers who try to work at very low margins and try to compete in this world with a lot of all kinds of big capital. And they all need a space to exist. So how do they exist? And what can we as a student body do for them? So we can map the problem that exists in different sectors, transport, automation, construction, uh, trans or maybe let's say a coolie carries a lot of load on his head when he climbs the stairs on the railway station and he's been doing that for ages. We often just pass it by and don't ask ourselves a question, is there a better way of doing that? Could there be a belt alongside the stairs with the stoppers on which people could keep their boxes or police could keep their boxes with a safety net so that it can't fall down? So the journey of a suitcase or a box or a weight from bottom to the top of a stairs can become easier. Every small drudgery that people experience in their life is dispensable. But it is dispensable only if we become uncomfortable. So my appeal to all of you is to become uncomfortable with the pain and the problems that our society is living with. Don't ever ask this question as to why others don't do it. That's not a question. We have to live our life and our life can be meaningful and purposeful if we try to solve a problem. Please remember, every time an engineer solves a problem, he or she doesn't become a better engineer, they also become a better human being. And I think you want to become a better human being. So try to map the problems, try to identify the innovations that common people have done, be inspired, add value to them, calibrate them, test them, develop a modular design so that the innovator doesn't have to manufacture every part, do a standard component analysis, maybe some parts he can use ready-made, some only he has to fabricate. The cost can come down, he can become competitive, more people can afford what he has done and life of users as well as innovators becomes better. So there's a great deal to be done, great deal to be done about the problems that innovators face, about the problem that common people face. Haven't you eaten rice in the last few days? And do you realize that all the women, all the women who transplant this paddy in the field, transplanted bare feet, keeping them under the water for days and days in a back bending posture, but no conscious conscience of anybody has been stirred by this problem. Otherwise you would have had by now a lot of manual transplanters. Same is the case with the cobbler who uses a triangle a stand of iron which was designed when the shoes were having nails. Long time ago you wore shoes which had nails. You needed a stand to hammer them. Today's shoes don't need nails but you still have the same stand with the cobbler. Who will design the new tools for that cobbler? He is providing service to us. If he does his job better, we are all better off. But we don't care whether his life improves or not. But we also don't care that we are, the service that he provides to us is not as good as it could be. If you had a clamp and if you needed to put adhesive to make your shoes stronger, he could serve you better. So not, uh, let's not do charity. Let us not, do be, let us not be benevolent. Let us do whatever we want to do because we want our quality of life to be better. I would like you to be entrepreneurs. I was very happy to hear that Director NIT and the chairperson, chairperson of the NIT both desire 
that more and more students should set up their own enterprises. They are even thinking of mobilizing funds to invest in enterprises. They are prepared to give you funds to fabricate your product and take it to the market. Now when such a situation has arisen, what are we waiting for? You have a very favorable environment from your institutional structure, from the leaders of your institution, and you have a favorable environment so far as techpedia.in is concerned, which is a platform where every single project of every student of the country should be displayed. I don't want any student of my country to do what has been done before. They must be original. You all must be original. Why? Because your life is precious. Each one of you is only of your kind. There are no two copies of any one of you. Then how can projects have copies? We cannot be better than quality of what the work that we do. So each project should be unique. And it can only be unique when you know what others have done. By even mistake, I shouldn't do what has been done before because my life is precious. I am meant to do something original. Second, I should do, I should take up a problem which affects somebody, real life problem. Third, I should work on innovation that common people have done. Fourth, I should try and collaborate with other people, other students, either in my own department, my own discipline, my own institution or other institutions. Fourth, I should try and see whether I can expand the open source, I can expand the public domain. Not every project needs to be patented, not every project needs to be protected, not every project will become enterprise. A lot of us have enjoyed things in our life for which we never paid. There's a world, this world is beautiful because there are things which you can benefit from without paying for them. We don't pay them in cash, we pay them in gratitude. We pay them in, with all the kindness that this world has. So try to create and expand the open source. Try to expand the public domain. Finally, please remember, Every time you would solve a problem unsolved, you will not become just a good engineer. You will become a better human being. And I think you deserve to be a better human being. It is not what others say about us. When we look into the mirror and we find that our eyes and our head are high and our eyes are deep and we can concentrate and look at ourselves with great sense of pride, then life is worth it. I wish you all the best. And I'm sure you will help in taking the Techpedia dot into every single college. Bring all kinds of information about projects, solutions, problems, networks, create meta platforms by which all that we are discussing can happen much faster. Own, own a part of this by this techpedia.in and run it from your college. We want to have a vision where this platform will be managed in a distributed manner from the people who will take care of various verticals all over the country. India is the only country which has pulled more than 100,000 projects to make sure that none in our country would do what has been done before. Let us raise the bar further. Let us try to bring projects and ideas from all over the world. Let us provide support to people in various, various emerging economies, various developing countries. And we can do that. And we must do that. That's the destiny that India has and I'm sure we are going to play a part in this destiny. Thank you. All the best. Good luck. I should also tell you that every summer or every winter we walk in different parts of the country calling, we call it Shodhi Yatra and I hope that you will all pursue the same Shodhi Yatra in your own region. In the summer, coming summer of 2013, I want to see hundreds of these walks, hundreds of these Yatras by a group of you, maybe four, five, ten in a group, would go from one end of the community, one end of the district to another end and map the problem that they've come across and the solution that they come across, the innovation that they come across. And then come back and describe those. And once you describe them, you will also parameterize them. And then you will know which link in the chain is weak, which needs to be strengthened, what kind of value need to be added. Now value engineering is the way future of future. And we cannot do learn value engineering unless we learn to identify the link that needs to be strengthened. That is what value engineering is. How do you add maximum value with minimum effort and minimum material and minimum cost? That's what the value engineering is all about and I'm sure you will all learn about that. There are, there are awards given by Srashti through techpedia.in called as Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Awards. These awards are of three kind. MLM, more from less for many. Which essentially means that if any technology that is frugal in nature, that uses material the least, but provides services the most, or benefits the most, 
is MLM. It need not be only for poor. It could be a high-tech technology. It could also be intermediate technology. It could be technology which is used to produce more technologies, whatever. Second is social technologies, technology which solves social problems. And third award is for pushing the technological edge. If you do something to push the frontier of technology, you created a new concept, a new equation, a new parameter ways of measuring uh, things and uh, understanding them. So there are three awards under Gandhi and Young Technological Innovation Award and I hope that you will contribute to this competition. January 31st, 2013 is the last date and I'm sure we will get unprecedented contribution. I would also like that a group of you, when you collect all these nominations, try to uh, sit together and maybe with the help of some faculty members, try to make a short list. We may accept a short list, we may not accept a short list, but it will be a good idea if you could say, sir, we have, lot, we have got these 5,000 ideas or 2,000 ideas from our college and other colleges. To, in our view, these 20 ideas or these 100 ideas are the super best. Kindly look through these first and then see whether you need to include others. Third is that we should also understand that there are a lot of grassroots innovators, such as Malaysia, very far, not very far from your institution. And we are planning to create a community innovation center. Community Innovation Center would mean a place where children can come on weekend from nearby schools and see the life of an innovator and how things happen. How do ideas become reality? If children get exposure to innovations at an early age, they will get unsettled. And who knows what innovation they will produce in their own life when they grow up. So we need to expose children and provide them tools and techniques. And we are willing to invest in that Community Innovation Center, if you can find volunteers to run it round the year for every Sunday so that children from government schools, municipal schools and other schools can come, learn. Some of you will be there to explain because we can't expect innovator to stop his work and all the time do this service, but students can go and do that. Finally, a lot of innovations are in other parts of the country. National Innovation Foundation, Honeybee Network has a huge pool of innovations. Please use these innovations develop projects around them in your final year or third year and see whether you can add value to them. If you add value to them, I can assure you that you would not only improve the lives of those innovators, but all the people who use those products and services will benefit from your effort. And you will learn, if nothing else, to analyze an innovation and then ask yourself, how come these people who have not even studied up to school, forget about college, come out with such wonderful ideas and we, we meaning all of us, with all the education that we have, often can't break the new ground. So the, the work on grassroots innovations will instill in us an appetite and hunger for being innovative ourselves. I'm sure with all the three things, the work on the, the nominations for the Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Awards, work on grassroots innovations, creating community innovation center, pursuing walk in the summer to understand the problems of MSME, small enterprises as well as informal sector, we are going to really cover some new ground. And remember, we have very few innovations by women in our database. Not because women are not innovative, but every girl among you, and I'm addressing girl not because boys cannot do that, but in our culture somehow, women feel more comfortable in talking to women. If such is the case, then girls among you have a special responsibility of uncovering the talent of women of our society so that their creativity, their aspirations, their dreams don't remain masked by the structure that we create in our society. So I hope that we will learn and discover new, new sources of creativity through your eyes. Keep it up.